Go. All right. It is Friday. It is the fifth, and we're doing the integral test for solving, for testing for convergence of a uh, series with all positive terms. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, let's see. What if? Uh, okay. What if I gave you this series? Where's my pointer? There it is. Kindly consider the following series. Now, usually, <coughs> what we did yesterday was rare. With geometric series, not only did we figure out when it converged, but what it converges to, that's a rare result. Very often, you can't tell exactly what it converges to. But usually, all you need to know for power series next week, well, next unit, all you need to know is whether we converge or not. Okay, so here's a test for convergence when you're not too sure. Let's say I have this series. Uh, the sum as k goes from 2 to infinity of 1 over k ln k squared. Now, this is some wild series. I don't know anything about it. It's not harmonic. It's not geometric. What the heck is it? I don't know. Plug in some numbers. Maybe you can see a pattern. Let's see. Plug in what first? 2 in for what? Okay, notice we don't always have to start at 0 or 1. It doesn't always have to be n, right? Okay, don't get crazy. 1 over 2, ln 2 squared. Hmm. Plus, what's the next term? 1 over 3, ln 3 squared. Plus, 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 plus. Okay. Does it pass Cauchy's divergence test? Are the terms getting smaller and smaller and smaller? Yes, they are. Okay. Uh, by the way, it's not only known as the Snowball's Chance in Hell Theorem, it's also known as Cauchy's Minimal Criterion for the Convergence of Series with All Positive Terms. Holy cow, that's one long name. Okay, so Cauchy's Minimal Criterion for Convergence is passed. But we still don't know if it converges or not. It has a chance of convergence, right? But it may not. Ah, okay, well here's an idea. What if we find something whose sum is bigger than that? And we show that it converges. If we can figure out something, the numbers of which we add up, they end up being bigger than this number, whatever you get if you add this up forever. Then if this is smaller, this converges too. If the other sum converges and it's bigger, right? Well, it can be shown that the improper integral that you get by converting this to a function. Are you ready? 1 over x ln x squared. I can't write. 1 over x ln x squared dx, right? What did I do? I, just, I took the discrete variable k and replaced it with the continuous variable x. And now I make it an improper integral from 2 to infinity. It can be shown that this area, if it converges, this area is larger than this. So if this converges, that converges. If this diverges, this area is actually smaller than this. If this diverges, that diverges. Okay? So if this converges, that converges, that diverges, that diverges. That's convenient. Can you do this using improper integrals? How do you rewrite this? Who's bad? A, B, or C? B, the limit as B goes wild. Okay, the integral from 2 to b of 1 over x ln x squared dx. Well, then, wait a minute. Can you integrate that? Is it partial fractions? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Yes? Yeah, u is l if u is ln, du is 1 over x dx, isn't it? So I'm going to write it this way. The limit, as b goes wild, the integral from 2 to b, of ln x to the negative 2 dx over x. So if you make this u, this is du, right? So how do you integrate u to the negative 2 du? Right? It's a power rule, in other words, right? How do you integrate u to the negative 2 du? You get u to the... Negative 1 over? Negative 1? Okay, good. So let's say that's the limit as b goes to infinity of, um, let's see, ln 
to the negative 1 over negative 1 is negative 1 over ln, isn't it? Evaluate it from 2 to b. All right. So let's do that. The limit as b goes to infinity of negative 1 over ln b minus a negative 1 is plus 1 over ln 2. All right, so does that limit exist? If it exists, so does the series converge. If the improper integral does not exist, so does the series diverge. So, what did it say you? Okay, don't be like Algebra 2 and Trig, huh? Is it convergent? What do you think? Spencer, you were saying what? Yeah. Why? Right, so what's the limit? 1 over ln2. Right, okay. Now remember, if this limit exists, it's not the sum. Okay, don't confuse the two. But it's bigger. I can show, this can be shown. I'm not going to prove this theorem. This is a theorem. The integral test theorem can be proven. I'm not going to prove it. We don't uh, do that in this course. But um, if this converges to a number, in this case, what was it? 1 over ln2? Whatever that number is, it's bigger than whatever this is. Okay? It's not the same as this, but it's bigger than this. So if that exists, so does this. Okay, so we're going to say, therefore... Hey, look, give me the thing. Okay, this is what you say. This is, they like to see this on the uh, AP. Therefore, the series, as k goes from 2 to infinity, of 1 over k ln k squared converges by integral test. You don't have to say much, but you've got to say something. Okay? That's it. That's the integral test. So that's why we needed improper integrals, okay? All right. What about, oh, let's see. Let's try another one. Are you ready? Is that okay? Any questions on that one? Problems with that one? No? Yes, maybe. We're good. All right. So you've got to know your u subs. You've got to know your integrations. You might need some partial fractions. You might need some by parts. You need improper integrals. All of that stuff comes into play. All right. How about... How about this one? Well, we saw this one yesterday. Let's see if we can prove it by harmonic, uh, that the harmonic diverges. Remember the harmonic? We know that it diverges, right? Let's see if the integral test says that. Hmm. Well, remember what this is. This is 1 plus a half plus a third plus a fourth, right? We already showed this diverges yesterday, right? Let's see what the integral test says. Let's see how it works when there's divergence. How do you rewrite a discrete function in n as a continuous function that you can integrate? You replace a discrete function with, a discrete variable n with x. So it's just 1 over x dx, the integral from 1 to infinity, right? Again, this is a, b, or c. b, the limit as b goes to infinity of uh, the integral from 1 to b of 1 over x dx. All right, good. What's the antiderivative? It's ln, right? Okay, so this equals the limit as b goes to infinity of the ln of x evaluated from 1 to b. Okay, fine. Limit as b goes to infinity ln b, absolute value of b, minus ln absolute 1. This is 0. What happens in the limit? Diverges, right? This limit does not exist. Okay? Therefore, this series diverges. I can't write. Diverges by integral test. All right, now I'm simplifying things here. There's a number of things you have to check before you can apply the integral test, okay? Uh, this is the guts of it. If you get this, you've got the integral test. But be careful. There are three antecedents to the integral test theorem. What is an antecedent? When you write a, uh, a theorem, you usually write if stuff, then stuff. I didn't tell you the if stuff. If stuff, then you can do the integral test. And if the, integral, if the improper integral diverges, so does the series. If the improper integral converges, so does the series. But what's the if stuff? The if stuff, you've got to be careful. It has to pass Cauchy, okay? So the limit as one over n, as of one over n as n goes to infinity must be 
zero. Okay, and um, aside from that, uh, let me how, how am I going to say it? The function that you get, its derivative must always be negative. In other words, it must be decreasing. The numbers you're talking about must be decreasing towards zero, not just in, as limit of zero, but decreasing towards zero. What's the function we're dealing with? f of x is 1 over x. What's f prime? What's f prime? Derivative. Go for it. It's negative 1 over x squared. Right, exactly. Okay. Is this always negative on this domain? Yeah. So f prime is negative for all x from 1 to infinity. And is f of x continuous? On the